Hello everyone, Igor from Piano Vertu. Welcome back to our showroom here in Montreal and today's review on the Fridolin pianos designed by Schimmel. So, first and foremost, we're gonna listen to how the piano sounds. Uh, we're gonna go a bit into the history of the Fridolin pianos that are designed by Schimmel and we're gonna look into the materials and the action, of course, that are inside of the piano. So, without further ado, let's take a listen. So just before we get inside of the piano, let's touch a bit on the history of the instrument, of how it came to be. This is going to help us understand the purpose of the instrument. So in the beginning, there was two brothers in Germany. So you can kind of see where this is going. There was Wilhelm Schimmel and Fridolin Schimmel. So Wilhelm Schimmel is the uh, founder of the Schimmel uh, pianos. They were made first in Germany and are still made in Germany. Um, that was in the year 1893. He had a brother, as I said, Fridolin Schimmel, which sailed to America to open a piano factory there to attack the American market. So it is a different market with different needs, and those needs were provided by Fridolin Schimmel. The American market at the time required a piano that would be robust, that is solid, uh, that sounds good, and that is affordable. So all of those, uh, let's say, characteristics and parameters are still true to this day. It is a great point of entry for a beginner or an intermediate piano player, or just for a family who wants to have an affordable, good looking, good sounding piano at their home uh, to enjoy it. So taking a look here inside of the beautiful action, the hammerheads are made from highly elastic merino felt uh, with high flexibility and low damping properties. Uh, the felt is made from the highest quality merino wool in traditional fooling process in Germany. For the hammer cores, the hardwoods in combination with tension regulating underfelts are used. The result is a great amount of richness uh, of tone colors and the different dynamic levels. Uh, as well as long-lasting tones due to low damping effect on the strings, which is uh, the short contact period uh, due to highly elastic felt. The dynamic soundbar is clamped to the soundboard during the production of the soundboard. This regulates the flow of the energy in the soundboard when playing at different volumes, which ensures a wider range of sound characteristics depending on the attack and volume. This is what we call uh, high tonal dynamics. And so on this note, we are coming uh, to the end of the review. I would leave you guys with a bit of a personal opinion about this piano. As I said previously in the video, I feel like this is a really good uh, point of entry for a beginner to intermediate uh, level of a piano player, for people who are pursuing piano studies and the art of the instrument. 
as well as a great purchase for a family who doesn't necessarily uh, pursue piano at a professional level, but nonetheless, who wants to have a beautiful looking instrument, a good sounding instrument in their home that's gonna last them a generation for an affordable price. Uh, that is what it comes down to. Uh, now, talking about the sound, I really enjoy the lower frequencies of this piano. They have a really nice depth to them and uh, they actually sound quite big. I would kind of compare them to what it's certain baby grants uh, even sound like. It is a spacious sound, has a lot of room. Uh, the treble is really nice, really slick. So that's what I think about the piano. I enjoy playing it. Now, will you enjoy playing it? Only you can tell. So uh, go to your local dealer and discuss the pricings. Try the piano out for yourselves and make the ultimate choice by yourself. On this note, I wish you all a really good day. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, like it, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.